and that's a delusion, of course, because it can't. And on another level, um, higher aspects of this force, this negative force, um, want to actually steer people off the path. Mm-hmm. So they, their intention is to steer as many people away from this organic process of ascension uh, as possible. So we're coming up. So because we journeyed down through the dimensions of the universe and we went right down to the depths and the bowels and, and, and to the furthest points of separation uh, that we can go. And now we're starting to bring it all back and we're coming, we're on the way back. But even though the perception of devolution has been in the last few millennia on this planet, it's, it's, think of that as a mini cycle because it's all fractals. It's cycles within cycles within cycles. And so just like the Mayan calendar expresses that we are compressing previous cycles into these smaller cycles. So we're replaying everything that we've done before, but just in shorter periods of time. Right, right. If that makes sense. Yep. So I guess also in one sense, I mean, I have my own uh, personal idea of, of why some of these you know, malevolent forces uh, are here, uh, what their reason might be and what their function is and, and why they're allowed to be here. But... Um, I mean, if we look at this from the point of view of of uh, God, if you will, that you spoke of earlier, uh, what what is what is the higher function for that? Why why are they allowed to try to derail us from the path that we're on, uh, George? Mm. Now, first thing I want to clear up to is that the as, the concept of God that I'm expressing is not biblical, okay, and sure. it's not religious mm. um, in any form. It is um, it is reality. Okay, so it is the reality that exists beyond religious paradigms, scientific paradigms, and new age paradigms. That's where I'm coming from. Um, so I just want because you know the mo- moment you mention the word God, people feel funny about it. I just use that label. Sure, you can, we can call it universal creator, the universal consciousness. You can use whatever label you like. Yeah. It was just one that people are familiar with. And so the reason we have this negative force here on Earth is because it's graduation time. And so what negative, because this is a polarity-based um, construct, uh, the, the greater portion of this universe is a light expression of light, which is a waveform. So you've got the whole universe, um, in the, well, the portion of the universe that is in this type of light construct is um, a polarity-based expression of light. Um, even when you're right up there in the high frequencies of light, um, high, much higher than what we're experiencing here or even the 4D, you have an expression of light um, which is still frequency. At the moment you have frequency, you have polarization Yeah. because you're bouncing from one side to another so, and you have waveform. And so what negative, the negative charge does is it challenges you and that's the way the learning process occurs in this universe. It is through adversity that we prosper. And people will say, well, why would anyone want to suffer? Why would anyone want to go through adversity? If you just sit in a room wrapped up in cotton wool the whole time, you don't learn anything. That's right. You've got to get out there and you've got to live it. You've got to go through all these experiences in order to learn and gain the wisdom in your soul. So what you have is you have negative and positive. And these negative and positive um, constructs, each one of those are self-righteous in their own right. So the plus and the positive and the light that is in opposition to the negative and the dark is actually equal to the negative and the dark. It sees itself as above it, but it's not. Of course. It's no better. Yeah. Okay? And, and they become very self-righteous. They're the do-gooders. And um, the light that, that um, the expression of love and light that I'm coming from is you've got to take those two expressions and you integrate them into one. Okay? Yeah. Because we fragmented. And so the negative energies that are here on the planet now, we ourselves from a much higher aspect of ourselves have actually contracted them, okay, mm. to come here and challenge us to the nth degree. Because if anybody falls for their traps, their lures and entrapments, then you're not ready to become a creator. Because you can imagine creating a, a light-based, polarity-based universe and it's spiraling out of control. We can't have that. Yeah. You, you just can't in creation because it will be a disaster. Yeah. So really you've got to get to the point where you've accumulated enough wisdom to be able to hold center and remain balanced through all the challenges that we are currently going through and the ones we're about to experience in the next two years, profound challenges and experiences like you haven't seen anything yet, 
Huh. And really, once we get through that, then you know you've made it, honestly. And it's about having that deep, heart-centered connection. Well, I, I definitely want to ask you about what we might be up for next uh, as well. But I like this concept and this idea that you're presenting here. Obviously, a polarity-based construct, those who don't understand that, look at everything in nature. Uh, even Even the politics and the corporate world have understood this and adopted that. That's why we have this kind of hegelian you know philosophy working through society as well because it's a it's a construct from from nature and i think that some of these philosophers and subsequent some of these propagandists in the world currently understood this so they understand that we have to take this in order to to create something uh for something to work and be operational in our world it needs to be of this kind of uh you know the polarity based construct basically so that makes sense to me as well and that's why it's so important obviously just not always take the uh, the the comfy road uh, as well. It, it's not always the road of least resistance that is the most you know the best one. If I put it that way, you actually need to have some bumps along the ride as well, right, George? Yeah, unfortunately, yeah, <laughs> yeah. There are some major <laughs> hurdles along the way, but uh, those bumps and hurdles, well, while they hurt at the time and you're in that experience, it's it's never too pleasant. But once you get out the other end of it, it's uh, there's always uh, an appreciation. Absolutely. Um, so. Let's see here. Where where do we want to go next? I, want, I guess we can talk about the, what we're up for uh, next. I mean, how do you see things unfolding here in the next uh, uh, couple of years? And I mean, it's I guess from my personal point of view, it's um, I thought that more would have unfolded if I put the, put it that way, and, and it happened by this time, 2011. Uh, we're marching towards 2012, and and uh, and for some reason, I thought that there would be, have been, been more. Uh, calamity in one sense, more more chaos, and not not from the point of view that you know I want to see this or whatever and, and urge it to bring it on, but at the same time, it's been kind of working slow because in some cases I see the deconstructive as being a, a good force actually in the world at the end of it, and some of these r- paradigms we're l- living through right now in reality needs to kind of break up a bit, but that hasn't happened as as, as quickly as I, I expected. How about you, George? Yeah, not as quickly as George would have liked either. Um, <laughs> but from the perspective of my greater being, um, yeah, it's kind of a good thing that it hasn't happened yet because it allows us to have an easier go of it. So what will happen is it'll be very intense over a shorter period of time rather than drawing out because the world is, and the people are suffering. There's, there's so much suffering in the world as it is. So um, rather than making it worse, it actually ends up being... Um, a little bit better. It softens the blow, so to speak. Yeah. And uh, it's it's what it's happening is it's like a quiet revolution that's happening behind the scenes because the changes are actually coming in from a subatomic level, and the and the, our atoms are spinning faster. I know mine are. I just, I know you know like I know my being. So I, I feel that they're spinning faster. My vol- molecules are vibrating faster. And the reason I, I'm sensitive to this because I've been in so many different realities. I've been beamed up into so many different ships. Each race has its own vibration, so therefore my molecules were vibrating differently. Each time I came back, it took different rates of recovery. You know what I mean? So yeah. every, every reality has its own vibrational pattern. I've, well, I've even, um, dare I say, I've been to Mars, and, and that has its own vibrational reality. Well, and, uh, I haven't and, had any of those kinds of experiences, but I'm feeling that uh, too, George, uh, the, the, the w- strangeness in terms of frequency, the, how the time picks up, and, and the kind of the, almost a nervous jittery uh, feeling that is happening right now. But go ahead, George. Yeah, and we're in an acceleration of time. We're on a J-curve here. We're a logarithmic J-curve. It's accelerating. And, and I've got that in my harmonic equations. You know, we've got the fixed timeline of 24,832 years and we have the illusionary timeline where you take that 24,832 years and you, and you increase it by 6.18%, which is 1 over 5, which is the Christ consciousness below unity, which is where we are. And that ends up to be 26,366.618 years. And I don't want to get all heady and technical about it. But, you know, it comes down to the point of um, the, the processional cycle being measured earlier on in the in last century and then later on in that century. And there's been an increase in, in, in the cycles. Mm-hmm. So when they measured it earlier on, it was 20, 25,800 years. And then, and then in the 80s, it was 25, 20. 5,920 years. So you can see that the acceleration is occurring. If they were to measure it now, and I challenge anybody to measure the processional cycle now, please do. Please go ahead. Mm -hmm. You will see that it's over 26,000 years now. And then as we get closer now to 
um, 20, March, 21st of March 2013, which is the critical point in time where the cycle actually ends, you will see it'll, it'll add up to exactly 26,366.618 years. And so we're on this illusionary timeline that we're experiencing. So time is speeding up, definitely. And uh, the, the changes that are, we are about to go through. So what I want to share with people too, I'll preface that because um, the, the information that I'm about to share will just sound crazy and I know it will. And I've struggled with this for years. I really have. But when I keep going out and having these meetings with beings and all these other levels and I connect with Mother Earth and I connect with Father Son on the deep levels that I have, I, I can't not say this anymore. And it sounds crazy and it sounds nuts. And my personal friends have, they enjoy everything what I say, but this one point in conjecture each time that this planet is going to become a being of light and, and the point of time when it's going to happen. So... I'd, I'm just going to express it because this is what's in my being. It's not a program in my head. This is in my being and I can't not say this. I have to speak my truth. So I hope people can, can respect me for that. All right, so sure. what we have here is, is it has to do with 2012. Mm -hmm. It has to do with the ending of the Mayan calendar. And the cycle actually does not end on the 21st of December 2012. It actually ends on the 21st of March 2013 because it's not the procession of the solstices. It's the procession of the equinoxes. And the main calendars that a lot of people are studying are just a little bit out, not much, just a little bit out in the harmonics. And they could say, well, don't be ridiculous. That's a ridiculous statement. But just like the Bible or any piece of literature, it's been modified down through the ages. So when you have the original pieces of the calendar, um, the outer lying sort of settlements, um, they had their versions of the same calendar. And so what we are just seeing is the very few pieces that made it through the millennia of, of a, an agenda of disseminating and uh, not disseminating, destroying any piece of evidence of life and its true life cycles on this planet. Mm -hmm. So something got through, some remnants got through, and that's what these people are studying, just a few bits and pieces that made it through of, of this incessant agenda of going around to every culture on earth and destroying everything that, that recorded the natural cycles of life. Yeah, yeah. And so, yeah, and, and that, so and that's, they're, that's they're just... An, a, uh, sorry, that's an explanation, if you will, then, on some of the... Uh, the behavior of uh, the Roman Catholic Church, for instance, and, and uh, the destruction of, of knowledge and of people and of cultures and of, uh, we have the burning of witches and the, you know, the eradication of shamans and all that happening throughout human history. So you're saying there's a, there's a reason for that, basically. Absolutely. It was to totally take away the true knowledge of life and the natural cycles of life. So we ended up being assimilated into this false and synthetic construct that we um, we are conditioned into our societies with. Yeah. So the the cycles actually end on the twenty first of March, twenty thirteen. Now I I have harmonic equations that are showing that, and I'm no mathematician, right? I'm just sharing this knowledge that I've I've bought from within my being and from my journeys. And I ask anybody who knows anything about harmonics, please take a look at those equations because there's something there because those that cycle of 24,832 years, that actually plugs into the DNA, our DNA. It plugs into everything, all the cycles, the cycles of time. The, it just plugs into so much, just that one equation. So it's, it's, it's not 26,000 years. It's, it's deeper than that. It goes deeper than that. Okay. So um, what the events that will play out is that on the 21st of March 2013 is when the planet hits center, find center. Because in order for a planet to ascend or any being to ascend, ourselves to ascend, for example, it's important for us to find center. W would you agree with that? Yeah, of course. Yeah. And that's, that's just being sensible about it. 